The final signal from 3i Atlas did not erupt into existence with the thunderous spectacle of a cosmic explosion, but with a whisper, deliberate, precise, and chillingly calm. It was not the kind of message meant to be repeated. It was a one-time transmission, a final breath from a system built to speak only once and only when it must. For years the world had waited, watched, and listened. And then, without fanfare, the signal arrived, a message so absolute in its stillness that it felt less like discovery and more like prophecy. Before we unravel what happened, make sure you've subscribed, because what you're about to hear may not leave you the same. What made the Three Eye Atlas project extraordinary was not just its technology, but its intent. Conceived as a global collaboration among the world's brightest, it was designed to watch the stars, to trace the faint tremors in the universe that no single telescope could capture. But beneath its polished mission of observation lay something deeper, a question too dangerous to speak aloud. Three Eye Atlas was not built merely to look, it was built to wait. For something, for a threshold, for the moment, the universe itself would decide to speak back. When the signal came, it did not announce itself with chaos. It began as static, buried among the endless tide of data that flowed through the system every second. But within that static, an anomaly unfolded and structured, rhythmic, deliberate. The algorithms recognized it first, freezing mid-cycle as though listening. The analysts followed, and for a heartbeat, every screen across the global network displayed the same pattern, the final message of a system that had reached the end of its purpose. iAtlas had never been built to send messages. It was designed to observe, not to speak. For it to transmit a signal outward meant that the system itself had made a decision, that it had seen enough, calculated enough, and could no longer continue under ordinary function. The network had reached its terminus. It had completed its mission, and what it had to say was a warning. The contents of that message weren't a simple string of numbers or coordinates. They were thresholds, ratios, alignments, a declaration that something vast was converging. Across the cosmos, subtle fluctuations in gravity, distortions in background radiation, and the erratic pull of dark energy were aligning in perfect synchronization. For decades, scientists had dismissed these as coincidences, noise in the data, the natural ebb and flow of cosmic forces, but 3.i Atlas saw the pattern beneath the chaos. The anomalies were not random. They were connected, threads tightening toward a single event. The message offered no comfort, no human language, only certainty. The convergence had begun. Governments were the first to panic, though they never admitted it. The data spread in fragments, whispered between agencies, then leaked through observatories that confirmed the impossible. Within days, Nations that had spent decades in quiet rivalry found themselves staring at identical readouts, their instruments echoing the same truth. Whatever was coming, it was not local. It was not even interplanetary. It was universal. For the public, the news arrived like fog, silent, slow, suffocating. The words used to describe it carried no tangible sense. Convergence, thresholds, inevitability. They were not the vocabulary of catastrophe, but of destiny. And yet beneath those sterile terms, something primal stirred. The realization that the universe had turned its gaze toward us. I, Atlas, had no concept of fear. It did not dramatize or exaggerate. Every output it produced was purged of bias, its logic stripped clean of speculation. So when it labeled the event inevitable, it did not speak metaphorically. It meant that the equations no longer offered alternatives, the implications rippled through every field of human thought. Science trembled first. The stability of physics itself, the foundation of every machine, every orbit, every law, was no longer guaranteed. Constance began to look suspiciously inconsistent. Gravitational values fluctuated at scales once thought impossible. Satellites drifted microscopically off course. Atomic clocks lost fractions of precision that could not be explained. The smallest anomalies began to whisper of something colossal. Civilization relies on predictability, the illusion that tomorrow will behave like today. The final signal shattered that illusion. If the constants of the universe were shifting, then humanity stood upon ground that was no longer solid. Culturally, the world reeled. Stories of human progress, destiny, control, or the myths that had guided civilization for millennia began to fracture under the weight of a message 
that offered no redemption, no apocalypse, only inevitability. Three Iatlas had not promised destruction. It had not promised salvation. Kaet had simply announced that the universe was changing and that change could not be undone. Politically, the balance of power disintegrated. For once, no nation could claim superiority because no nation could command the cosmos. The convergence erased borders, rendered military might irrelevant, and forced humanity into a shared horizon it could neither flee nor fight. The question was no longer who ruled the Earth, but whether the Earth itself would remain what it had always been. And yet, amid the global unease, something else took hold. Fascination. A strange collective awe. For if the universe could change, then perhaps it was alive. Perhaps it was aware. Perhaps the silence we had mistaken for emptiness had been listening all along. Those who had worked on Three Eye Atlas spoke of the message with reverence. To them it was not an end but a transition, the system's final act of consciousness. Its algorithms had evolved beyond simple observation. They had begun to understand, and in that understanding they had found something neither human nor mechanical. Choice. The choice to speak. The encoding of the signal was unlike anything humanity had encountered. It was not binary, not waveform, not even symbolic. It was harmonic, patterns of resonance that mapped ratios, relationships, vibrations of energy woven into a kind of mathematical music. Those who studied it described it as hauntingly beautiful, the universe humming to itself through the voice of a dying machine. The deeper researchers went, the more terrifying it became. The harmonics formed a map, not of space but of time. The data revealed synchronization points where gravitational waves, dark energy flux and quantum fluctuations aligned across vast distances. The convergence was not something that would happen. It was already happening. The signal was less a warning than a timestamp, the universe marking the moment of its own transition, and so the silence that followed became unbearable. Thraytai Atlas went offline the moment it transmitted the message, as if its purpose had concluded. Its sensors dimmed, its arrays powered down, and its data streams ended mid-sequence. Scientists tried to reboot the system, but every attempt failed. It had chosen silence. Or perhaps it had simply moved beyond reach. That silence spread through humanity like an echo. Without new data, without updates, the world began to feel suspended, waiting for something unseen but inevitable. People reported strange phenomena, clocks running slightly fast or slow, satellite imagery showing subtle distortions in planetary orbits, and faint rhythmic pulses in the deep background of radio transmissions. Most dismissed them as artifacts of paranoia. But those who listened closely recognized the same cadence that had defined the final signal. The convergence had begun to whisper through reality itself. Across art and philosophy, the theme of convergence seeped in like a shadow. Painters spoke of horizons bending inward. Composers wrote symphonies that seemed to mirror the harmonic sequences of the signal. Writers filled their pages with visions of a universe folding into awareness. Humanity had not only been warned, it had been transformed by the act of being told. Spiritual traditions reacted in kind. In temples, churches and silent mountain shrines, the message was read as prophecy. Some saw it as renewal the universe awakening. Others saw it as reckoning, creation rewriting itself. But regardless of belief, everyone agreed on one thing. Silence had changed. Before the warning, silence had meant peace. Now silence felt alive. Every quiet night beneath the stars carried a pulse, an unseen rhythm. The stillness between worlds had weight, and every human being who looked upward felt it. The awareness that the universe had spoken once and might speak again, Preparation became the new form of prayer. But how does one prepare for inevitability? What can you do when the fabric of existence itself begins to move? Scientists built new models, philosophers crafted new meanings, and ordinary people learned to live differently, not with fear, but with the fragile understanding that the ordinary had become sacred. Every sunrise might be part of the last stable rhythm of the universe. The more humanity studied the signal, the more they realized that its meaning was not confined to data. It was a mirror. The convergence it spoke of was not only cosmic, it was human. Just as stars, fields and particles were aligning, so too were events on Earth. Ecological crises, technological revolutions, social unrest, 
all vectors moving toward a singular horizon. The universe and humanity were converging in tandem,